Hey Kingdom, Dragon's Dogma 2 released today, and it's already getting really negative reviews on Steam. As of moment of review, it's sitting around 2.5 stars over here, 5 of 10, but in reality they are mostly negative reviews, and we will try to find out why is it happening. Because I was thinking about Dragon's Dogma as game of the year. It was looking really promising. Until saying most reviews from people on YouTube, it's really positive stuff. And I was wondering how people can already play the game one day before the launch. I saw a lot of streams yesterday, but turned out they are part of the Capcom Creators program, and I haven't joined this program for one single reason. When you join in this program, which is Capcom Creators exclusive program designed to support, grow and give appreciation to our amazing content community. And I could get like this, early access and other stuff. But when we joining, there is a bunch of rules, which is pretty basic. And then we get to like second part of this application, which sounds uh, really basic too, but if you read this stuff carefully, basically you're not able to make honest review that in some form or shape disrespects Dragon Dogma or other Capcom games. So I decided to make it super clear. And while I'm downloading Dragon's Dogma right now, yeah, my internet is pretty crappy, I want to open this discussion with you guys and see why everyone is review bombing Dragon's Dogma 2. Because you know I already made this mistake. In the past you see this mistake over here. And where I'm placed right now I need to pick my games carefully. Because that's our annual salary, and it's not even USD, so it's basically something like this. And 69.99 is like 10% of uh, monthly income in my country. And the main question people get is how to start a new game. So what's the problem? What's the problem? Why critics rate this game to 89%? while people is like overwhelmingly negative right now. So let's go into Steam reviews and try to find a truth over here. Mostly negative is crazy. The review bombing has gotten out of hand. That's a hot take from one of the guys who already played this game. And there is really nice answer over here. You think people are buying the game just to leave a negative review? Seriously, there is no other explanation. But some people is really agree and this game is amazing after patch or two. <laughs> yeah, we want it to be amazing instantly actually, not after patch or two. But what's going on in reality? Let's see most negative reviews and try to find out what's going on. And I like the first one. Gonna keep it short. Denuva, bad optimization and microtransaction. Don't buy it. We all think about it, but bad optimization can be fixed, like in few patches. For real. Denuva is nice protection for the game. But you know what? I know this man for his name, Sven Winke. He is director of Baldur's Gate 3. And you know why Baldur's Gate 3 got no Denuva in it? Basically because it's a great game. You don't need to protect it from, I don't know, cheaters, hackers, pirates and other guys. Everyone will still buy Baldur's Gate 3 and that's why it's super successful. Because it's just a great game. So, it's still choice of developers, I somehow support it, but as far as I know, Denova can make games run really badly. And you know, my specs is not really great and actually pretty old, so it's like 10 year for this PC, really like old RAM, 16 gigabytes. I guess uh, some people got more RAM in their phones. So we'll see how this game will run for me. And microtransactions. I don't get it. It's a, like a single player game. What microtransactions we are talking about? And I found this awesome comment from Jax. It's like best comment on Steam reviews right now, I would say, because we see everything that's going on over here. Anti-consumer practices. A review embargo was in place until release date. And here I can confirm it. Basically, you can't review it honestly and only after release date. But again, all these reviewers on YouTube, like uh, Game Ranks, by the way, not bad review before you buy IGN and other big guys, all of them are insanely positive, I would say. So that's really strange, actually. A list of pay to win items appearance on the store page on the release date. 
Yeah, so there wasn't really a bunch of these items on the store page before launch, but I guess it's totally fine. And pay to win is debatable. It's a single player game. And all of these items are really can be obtained in the game itself. So I can't say it's really bad, but you know, it's really weird. Microtransactions in single player game. Come on, Capcom. Or is it like Gritcom, Paycom? I don't know. Pre-order exclusives now unavailable. We're attached to release date. So maybe that's okay. Someone pre-ordered. Now they got some bonuses. I guess that's fine. Pay to win items. Let's talk about them. So what do we have in pay to win items? Port crystal warp location marker. You will get port crystal, which can be set in destination of your choice. Use a fairy stone to instantly transport your party to port crystal location. So this is basically like an item to have a fast travel and you can pay for it. But I guess you can obtain it in game anyway and it's not a big deal, you know, you can go on your foot, be on adventures, that's fine. Wake stone restores dead to life. Gain one wake stone, a stone with magic formed to wake stone shards. So you will have all the power to restore the dead to life once. And this probably will be used mostly on NPCs because uh, in some quests your NPCs can die and you will kind of fail this quest. And I guess it's totally fine, you know, you just uh, you can live with it. If you ever played Baldur's Gate 3, you can even like totally fail saves in the early game and you will play without one party member completely because he will be disappeared from the game. So that's totally fine and Rift Crystals points to spend beyond of the Rift and they can be used to hire pawns or purchase uh, special items. So you gain some currency in game but you can get it in the game anyway I guess. That's kind of fine. But this paragraph over here, it's insanely sad and heartbroken for me. Unable to create another character. If you know me, that's insanely sad, because uh, in Baldur's Gate 3 I was making new character for every build guide I made, because I think it's cool to make characters that look cool and fun for particular builds. Like Necromancer looks like Necromancer, Oathbreaker Paladin, really cool, Wild Magic Sorcerer, really wild, and so on. I like to make new characters. So there is no option in game to start again or delete the current save file? Jeez, guys, that's super, like, that's insanely fail stuff over here. Once you create a character, you are stuck with your created character and must purchase Art of Metaphorsis character editor to change it. Oh, that's insanely questionable stuff. So will this part work only once? So is it like I need to pay something to change my character every time? That's insanely sad because you know, like in games like GTA, you just go to barber shop and change your character. You don't need any additional stuff. And this guy looked online for ways to delete save files on PC, but it was unable to delete cloud saves from logging into Steam or browser. And also after deleting a save file on PC, the cloud save will replace the deleted save file. So I don't know will this work, but I got Steam Cloud like completely turned off on my PC because it uh, makes my PC run not smoothly. So we'll see how this will work out for me. Let's now investigate and see other comments. This got uh, a lot of likes over here, so let's find out what's going on. 199 to edit, so basically like $2 to edit your character appearance in a single player game after spending 18 bucks on it. Your character appearance is on the servers, so deleting your save file from like Steam folder and making edits within the character creator, even with cloud saves offs, does not apply to your in-game character. That's like crazy, it's super crazy. I wonder like will this work in offline mode some sort of stuff. I think people who advocate microtransactions have serious mental issues. Oh my goodness. Bro, just turn off your cloud saves. Why TF should you do that, Morans? Cloud saves exist to back up your files, not bind your wallet. <laughs> I agree with it. If having microtransactions in a game where you are not forced to buy them is bothering you of not playing a good game, then you got other problems, buddy. I would like a little bit agree with it. First of all, yeah, microtransactions not really bothering me too much. 
you know there are some games with microtransactions and also limited functionality like stash tabs and other stuff and some are just without them. Maybe that's why Last Epoch got a really hard launch because they got unlimited stash tabs. What actually bothers me about this stuff is my inability to actually make different characters. I really like to make one main character for like casual playthrough and then I like second playthrough for my like challenge runs and other stuff. So based on stuff I read over here I can't do it and that's actually horrible. So most negative reviews is like is like this basically. You can have only one character, cannot delete your character and have to pay two dollars to change your character. No FOV slider, can't just dips of FPS. We'll give this month or two and try again. And about cash grab and other stuff, but there's nice arguments. So people agree that devs should stop this type of business, but player actually encouraged to grind or buy items in the first place, not encouraged, I mean. So you can pay this five bucks for some runescape gold, but most players prefer to earn itself by themselves because the game was designed not around buying gold. I hope this game is not designed around buying some stuff. So let's see most funny comments over here. What's going on with funny stuff in this game? Me, butchered all NPCs to boost FPS. Oh, that's nice strategy by the way. That's nice strategy. This was judgment arise and this was the only way. <laughs> oh yeah. It's like Skyrim with good gameplay. Interesting. Interesting. And I want to see positive reviews. Let's see some positive reviews from people who actually played the game. So this guy got 7 hours on record. That's the same comment about butchering NPCs. Game good, performance bad. I've only played for about an hour, actually 2 hours over here. And this is positive review, but it starts really negative. Let's find out why. I've only played for about an hour. My first playthrough were negative because for whatever reason every game since 2K20 needs to compile shaders before you even play with which is well to me. And that's like totally fine I guess, like technology worked like that and I'm fine with it. After I got past that I loaded up the character I made using their character creator. That's fine, I made some. I can totally see how poor the optimization is despite the fact that I'm running the game on the highest possible graphics and the game's battery is smooth due to pretty damn beefy PC. So he's running on the highest possible graphics, but optimization is poor, okay. You can tell because when I dropped things like shadows or even textures down to low, my friends got haywire for 10 minutes until the FSR levels it all out. I guess I will make some kind of optimization guide. I will try to optimize game because you know my specs, I will need it. The gameplay itself is so damn good. It's almost Witcher 3 level combat, so it's like hack and slash, fun combat I guess, but it feels more fluid. That's nice because it's a new game. The boss fight had so much going on made it hard to see what the heck is going on. Oh yeah, that's why I guess I will start playing as Archer. I want to see these bosses and not just stand near of their legs. I think that's just due to setting and location. Yeah, it's like when you play melee characters against big bosses and you're not climbing them as uh, like a rogue class over here, so yeah, it's hard to see what's going on. Graphics actually good, that's nice. Sound is good. Yeah, Capcom having nice sounds, I agree. Microtransactions, they exist, it's embarrassing, it's a $70 game. DLC, it's a Capcom staple, but adding dump gems, shards and other stupid currencies in certified shareholders moment. Oh yeah, probably, that's it. Overall, it's a solid game as long as your computer is up to snuff. Wait for updates that fix optimization. Once again, mainstream publishers drop the ball on optimizing their damn game before releasing it. This was a dumb comment. Take that how you wish. No, that's actually a good comment. That's insanely good comment. And that's why this comment got like a lot of uh, positive reviews from other people. So I don't know about you, but I will find out myself how this game is feeling and will relieve my initial impressions. Probably. But for now, go into comment section and write what you think about this game yourself if you already played it or watched some other reviews. And let's have this discussion on this microtransaction. See you in the next videos, guys.